Hello and welcome to another Rightly Witterings and today I'm talking about this funny little machine, the Alpha. I'm going to show you unboxing it, I'm going to show you what it looks like and at the end of this I'm going to show you a little bit about it, what my impressions are and how fast it is to type on and so on. If you like this and if you're quite interested in the idea of an Alpha then there may well be a little bit of a discount. If you go and look at the bottom, certain devices from FreeWrite, uh, because I am listed as someone who has worked with them in the past, they allow you to have a little discount on some of the products you buy from them, if you buy them through my link. Uh, in the meantime, if you can hit the like button, then that really helps because it pushes my cha my channel up the YouTube videos listings. And also, if you subscribe, that helps too because it means that more people are likely to be recommended my videos, which is nice. Anyway, that's all for now. Let's get on with the video. What are we talking about? We're talking about the free right from Astro House and the free and the Alpha from Astro House. Lovely machines. Here's my impression. Hello and welcome back to Writerly Witterings with um, a tea drinking author who's run out. Never mind. Today I've received a very interesting box, so I'm going to talk about it. Now, I am currently in the middle of writing book nine of my Jack Blackjack Bloody Mary Tudor crime series, which is a brilliant series, in fact, um, if you like it. Uh... It's all those black covers up there are the first eight. I'm writing book nine. Later this year, I'm going to write a book which I've got under the project title of The Mrs. King. And then I've got to write a book which is going to be the third book in my Art of Murder series. There's the first in that series. And a jolly good book it is too. But... Um, this means three books in a year. I've got a lot of work to do. So one of the last things I wanted to hear was that somebody wanted to send me something for me to test. Because it's all extra time that is not necessarily what a writer needs in the middle of a book. But I thought, what the hell? So, as you will all know, I do an awful lot of my writing, especially when out and about, on an Astro House free write, which currently is in need of a battery charge. But why do I like this free write? Well, it's not light. It's lighter than a laptop. It won't do emails. It won't do, let's see, what won't it do? It won't do emails web surfing, it won't do um, play music, it won't do any of the things that this jolly lovely Apple computer will do. What it will do is allow you to type for hours and hours. It's got a battery that'll last for a couple of days without a problem. And everything you type on this wonderful keyboard, and it is a wonderful keyboard, all individually sprung keys. Uh, they're cherry keys, I think. And some people don't like the noise. I love it because as a typist, I can build up a rhythm while I'm typing and that helps me write. It's also got this lovely screen, which allows me to read it at any angle. And it's the first computer I've ever had where I can type on it with it on my lap, on a railway train, carriage, seat on a cafe's stool anything anywhere I want to put it I plonk it on my lap and I can type really comfortably really easy and the proof for me was I was sent this free of charge by Astro House for a two-week review and I contacted them immediately and said two weeks isn't going to be enough I'm in the middle of writing a book I'm not going to get around to reviewing your thing until after I've finished that book so I need it for at least a month they said okay after two weeks, I'd played with it enough and I had to contact him and say, how much do I need to pay to buy it? 
So this cost me, I think it was 500 quid back then. But it's in constant use, which is why the battery's dead now, and it is fantastic because it's got a brilliant keyboard, it's got a brilliant screen, and when I used to take an Apple laptop with me to London on the train, every time I opened the lid on my MacBook Air, it felt as though the whole computer was going to topple over with the weight of the screen. And while typing, I was constantly aware that the heel of my hands had to be on the bottom of the, the uh, laptop itself so that I could type. And I could not type on that thing properly because the keys were standard Apple type laptop keys. They weren't good. Um, as I say, I could never get the damn thing comfortable. The most I ever managed on that was during the two and a half hours, three hours trip to London, I managed 300 words. First time I took that Astro House free write on my lap up to London, I did three and a half thousand words on the way up and I did more on the way back. But the great thing about that machine is it is very effective. It's very lovely. Some people say two problems. First is, oh, it's very heavy. And the second is, oh, that keyboard's very loud. I don't find the weight a problem. It fits into my two main bags that I carry with me when I'm going up to London or elsewhere. And as for the noise of the keys, if somebody in a coffee bar is that bothered about the sound of my keyboard, they can move away a bit. Uh, is it really a problem in a coffee bar where people are shouting at each other all the time? No, I don't think so at all. So I'm not at all bothered by that. But um, some people are. And Astro House is one of those companies where it does actually listen to the people that it sells to. Seems a bit strange. A lot of companies don't bother doing that nowadays, obviously. But Astro House do. And so they've decided they're going to market a new little machine called the Alpha. And they sent me one. First of all, got to say, well done Astro House, really nice packaging. Rather an Apple sort of look about it, don't you think? I've been sent this to review. I am hoping to God it's not as good as the free write because I really don't want to have to get into discussions about how much I can afford to spend on yet another typing tool with my wife. Mainly because this year we're a little bit more hard up than usual because usually at this time of year, immediately after Christmas, we get a nice little letter from the British Library to tell us that we've actually managed to see several books get rented out from the local libraries. Just trying to open this plastic now. And what normally happens is in early February, we'll get a little chitty from the public lending right telling us how much money we've earned. Jolly nice of them. We appreciate that sort of thing. However, last year, some evil scropes that's a technical English term for people who are not nice, managed to break into the British Library's computers and installed ransomware. So now, authors like me don't know when we're going to get our money from last year or how much it's going to be. And that is a big hole in an author's finances. Immediately after Christmas, it's a painful hole. Right, hope you like that the prototype for the Ian Fleming CWA um, Crime Writers presentation dagger for the winner of the Dagger Awards. It was a local blacksmith who made that mock-up for me, Dave Denford, bless him, sadly dead. But that was a wonderful, wonderful thing. Right, so there was plastic. There now is no longer plastic. Not even that much plastic, to be fair. And now we've got this nice box. There you go. Is that in focus? That's in focus. Good. What's it got? Well, it shows the keyboard, the screen, the on button. 
and it seems to be about it. I rather like this sort of marbled type of um, speckles in white plastic. That's quite appealing. The side view shows it lying flat on your desk. At the top here it says zero distractions, Wi-Fi cloud syncing, lightweight and portable, fast refresh display, mechanical keyboard and a kickstand. So you can get it to the angle you want. And on the bottom it just says right on. Because the thing about these devices, as I said, they don't do emails, they don't do spreadsheets, they don't do uh, Facebook or anything stupid like that. They are designed to be completely distraction free for typing. And that's what that first one was exceedingly good at. Mm, this is rather appealing. So here is the actual device and it is quite slim and I don't know exactly what the weight is but that is not heavy. There is a brochure saying welcome writer. There is a magnificent USB cable. Well there's good. They do have very nice USB cables Astro House. So here we go, strong braided cable. It's got its own little Velcro fastener, so that's neat. I am not an absolutely normal bloke. When I get a device like this, just sometimes I will look at the instructions. So here we go, what's in here? The, there are some stickers. Not a reason to buy one, but they're nice. Then there is instructions on how to get help. Nice little card. With This is the go faster instructions. Get started by pressing the power button. Always a good start. When prompted, press both new keys which are two keys at the bottom left and right. And then it says, right. There's a thing. And then there's actually a user manual, which I think is probably going to be all in English. Yes, it is. It's all in English. So there's a quick start guide. Press the power button, press both keys. Right. Overview. There is... A charging indicator, that's nice actually. There is no charging indicator on my original free write, and it would have been nice to have that. There is a USB port at the back of it, so you can plug it um, straight into the mains. I suspect with my original one, I could plug it straight into my computer, the Apple, and it would be treated like an extra disk drive. I assume you can transport documents from here to your computer in the same way. There's a power button, there's a kickstand at the back, there are, there is the writing canvas, otherwise known as a screen, and there's a cable. So, meet your new writing partner, writing new and new, it's got a certain amount of cursor controls, that's nice. The old one hasn't got that, you can only go forwards by typing and backwards by hitting the backspace and writing and uh, deleting what you've been writing. Got navigation, we've got postbox and syncing. This is the one thing that a lot of people do not like, I know, about Astro House, is that everything is linked to their own cloud service called Postbox. And Postbox is not bad, it's just a, a cloud service. But it does mean that everything you type goes there and then you have it sync your post box will be synchronized to Dropbox, Evernote, whatever you want, and then you can call up from those uh, external disk drive systems, or you can call it straight up from your machine. So let's have a look in here. One of these um, funny sort of it feels like a cellulose type wrapper rather than a plastic one. I don't know. Oh, no, it's CP. And here is the free write. Now this is 
really very thin. It's very slim. It has this big kickstand on the back. It's also got some decent rubber feet, which should help to hold it stable. And it says your distraction-free writing experience can commence. Manage your account and settings at Postbox Get Free Write. So, turn it on. Your distraction-free writing experience waits, awaits. Clever stuff. Manage your account and settings at. Well, I think that's probably about it, what it's going to say. Now, there's two things here. It's time to begin. You've got two grey keys here, new, new. In the old original one, they were both bright red buttons, but with these, you press both together and it has started a new document for me. You can possibly just about see that there's a little underline here. That is the cursor. And now, how does it feel on my lap? It actually feels very nice on my lap. Let's see. I've just typed in my name incorrectly, as you do. I'll need to go back. The keys have a slightly strange feel. They are not like the original individually sprung cherry keys, whatever they were. They're a little bit harder. There's no click to them, so you can't tell when there's actually actuating, actuating, actuated. Uh, my fingers are a bit dodgy right now because of an operation on this arm last year. So my fingers do not function quite as well as they used to. This keyboard's going to take a little getting used to. Um, Main reason being that they are quite square. There's no um, dimpled top. There's no curvature on the very top. They feel quite flat across, which is not necessarily a negative. It's just a statement. The springiness is certainly a lot better than for example, my MacBook Air, which is a horrible, soggy keyboard. That feels quite nice. It is not as good as my original free, right? But then I'm not surprised. I wouldn't expect it to be. It's, uh, it's designed to be much, much flatter, uh, slimmer. So you've got a kick start here, which will change the angle might make it easier to read the screen in broad daylight. Yep, it is. There's no backlight that I can see. I'm just going to try that. No, no backlight. But one thing that is nice is that with my old original, if you want to delete a document, you have to go to Postbox and delete it there on your other screen. You can't delete a document straight from the keyboard. With this, you can. You can shred it. This will be permanently deleted from all devices and Postbox. This action is not reversible. Continue, return. Type shred and return, and it's gone. That I like. First impressions then. That is bloody light, very easy to stick into even a very small bag. Light, compact. The screen is smaller than the older one, but that's not necessarily a bad thing. I like the fact you have got some cursor control. I don't need it. I don't feel it's essential, but it's quite a nice one. Um, I like the fact it's got the kickstand 
just so you can change the angle of it. Would have been nice if there was a two level kickstand so you got a halfway and a full height, but that's a minor niggle. But that is very simple, very easy. I like the looks of it. It feels robust, doesn't feel as though it's gonna break when you wobble it or anything. It feels good and solid. So there you have it. It is without a doubt vastly different from the original, as you can see from the size of them. These keys are louder than those keys. Those are much more like a laptop's keys. These are much more like an old-fashioned typewriter, a real computer entry keyboard. Um, so, that's first impressions. Good, I like it. I'm now going to put these aside. I'm going to charge them both up and then I can do a decent comparative video in a little while. But as it stands, I can really see the use of this. It's My one reservation for me as a touch typist is the keyboard and how good that's going to be for me. But a new keyboard always takes time to get used to. That's not a reflection of this necessarily. It's a reflection of how well these things work. Hello and welcome back very briefly. I finished up that video yesterday and last night when I'd typed up what I needed to for the day, I thought, ah, oh, what the hell, I'll just give this little thing a quick try, a quick blast. And yeah, it's good. I went through it with a fair amount of detail. Um, I'm just going to read to you what I wrote last night while I was sitting here in my chair with it on my lap and typing away. So what did I say last night? I said, going up to the beginning, I typed a fair bit to be honest. Um, this is a very pleasant machine to type on. It's the first real chance I've had to type on it. And the keyboard is feeling very good indeed. I was surprised. I didn't expect to like this keyboard much. You look how far the travel is compared to something like the original Astro House Freewrite. There's not much travel, but it's significantly, uh, I do mean very significantly, better than something like uh, a laptop keyboard on an Apple or anything else that I've tried. Um, positives, the keyboard is a great deal better than the average laptop. I am enjoying it. However, it is a lot louder than other types. Each key appears to be individually sprung. And when I say that, you can actually see in between each of the keys. So I think they're individually sprung. So each of them does have good balance and weight. I'm a little bit disappointed that they haven't got a curve, a reverse dimple in them, so that you can feel them a little bit more positively. But that's a very minor quibble. It's very good for typing on. Not as good as the main free write, but it is damn good. Next, the weight and balance means I can sit here, here, on my comfy chair in the sitting room and type. I don't know what sort of speed I'm managing yet, I'll come back to that at the end, but I don't care. It feels good enough and I think I'll be able to type very well on it. So, excellent keyboard for typing, superb weight and overall package size, battery life looks good and it's clear enough even for me. Um, when I say that, uh, I missed out. I was obviously enjoying typing on this so much, I missed out certain things. I should have said battery life looks good, 
which is nice. And the screen seems good too, is what I meant today, and is clear enough even for me. I have diabetic maculopathy and retinopathy, so my eyesight is pretty much shot. But this liquid crystal screen works perfectly well for me. It's good to type on, easy to operate. So what are the gripes? There is one, and it is only one, and that is lighting. Down here, I've got a light on right here. If I turn this off, even today in, as you can see, broad daylight, this part of my room is too dark to work on. I tried to carry this through into my sitting room last night. Um, I was watching a bit of TV and I thought if I carry it through, I can type on it while I'm thinking. No, I couldn't actually, because the lighting in my sitting room is too dark. And if you can see that, you might be able to pick it up. Now, if I get some light shining on it, it's fine. If there's no light on it, as you can see, it's pretty dark. Now, I think for most people that won't be a problem. For me, with maculopathy and retinopathy, it is. So I just wish that, like the original Freerite, there was a backlight. The free right, if you hit the special and L for light, oddly enough, um, it turns on a light at the back of the screen and I can type on that with no lights on in the room whatsoever. So Astro House, the only suggestion I would make that would improve things for the more elderly type of writer like me would be if you could put a light behind the screen and behind the keyboard so that when it's a little bit darker I can see things. However, I've just told you all that so I don't need to read all this. <clears throat> yeah, so I said I'm going to look into the feasibility of a little light. You can buy these things that clamp onto the top of a laptop with a little LED light that just gives a little bit of light, that might be all I need. So I think I'll be having a look on Amazon to see if I can get something like that. My overall impression is this is marvellous. I said this is a superb little tool which will make life a lot easier for most people seeking a professional drafting machine that is easily portable, effective and non-distractive. Non don't know if that's a word or not, but it should be if it's not. There's no distractions on this. You've got no worries about emails or anything else. I think at $340, it's very good value. And for people who want to write regularly, something you can just throw into a little bag, lightweight, set up your own angle to type on, it's absolutely brilliant. Um, now, I wrote here, I've just typed 300 words in under 15 minutes, which means about 1,200 words per hour, which is not as fast as I am on the free write. With that, I'm about 1,500 to 2,000 words an hour. However, it's close enough, but I'm getting used to a new keyboard on this. So, very pleased indeed with the speed of typing as well. Now... There's a few things here that you need to be aware of. One is that if you want to check on the battery status and other stuff, and it will also allow you to um, update your post box, which means you're updating, you're backing up, your typing with the Wi-Fi and sending it to the cloud so that everything's secure, all you have to do is press and hold the space bar. And it tells me I have here words 325, the session time was 6 minutes 47 in total, Wi-Fi, it lists my Wi-Fi, the battery is at 99% and it was last synced less than a minute ago. When you want to set up your Wi-Fi, all you have to do is press and hold the, the power button for a few seconds and it leads you to turn on the Wi-Fi, turn off the Wi-Fi, 
link up to a new Wi-Fi system, whatever it might be. All very simple. Um, and what else is there? There was something else that just occurred to me. But it has gone. I'm going to be using this quite a bit in the next few weeks as an initial impress impression. Fantastic. Really, really good design. Very, very handy. Um, oh, the other thing I was going to mention is you haven't got folders. Now, if you're used to the original free write, you've got one set of um, three settings on a lever over this side, which is a folder A, folder B, and oddly enough, a folder C. The Wi-Fi settings are over here, which is on, off, and new Wi-Fi. But with the folders, when you go to your cloud storage system with Postbox, it will list a whole range of, um, well, it'll list in Postbox folder A, folder B, folder C. It'll give you each of the documents you've created in the different um, dates, so they're in date order, and you can see what, what you've got. Brilliant. With this, it hasn't got folders as such. Well, it has. It's just got the one. And this is the alpha device, and so, oddly enough, the folder you look to when you go to your post box is folder A. Can't really get a lot easier. I've already used a couple of documents I've created on this and pulled them up to my machine and edited them on the Apple. I have to say I do quite like the fact that you can editor, uh, edit. You have cursor control here, so W, S is up and down, A and D is left and right. If you press the new and then the arrows, it'll take you forward or backward one word at a time. If you press shift and new, and then the A, S, D, W, um, then that will move you to the top or the bottom. Of the, oh no, sorry. If you do it, I'm gonna to have to check this now. I've forgotten which way it goes. Um, so, oh no, I'm doing a software update there. That's impressive, I wasn't expecting that. But um, if you do the new and the W, A, S, D, that will move you, I think, a word at a time. If you do the shift new, then that'll take you a character at a time. Is that or the other way around? I don't know. But it does mean that when you've made a typo, you can go back, you can edit it. Now, what I tend to do is ignore that because I find it's faster for me with the original free write to keep typing. If I see a typo within a word, I'll go back that word. I'll just delete the word, then carry on typing. If I see something that's a paragraph or two uh, uh, before, I'm not going to delete everything and go back to it. I'm going to expect I'm going to pick that up on the edit when I get it onto my machine, uh, my Apple, and edit it properly there. But I want to keep in that frame of mind where I'm just creating, because I find that's by far and away the most efficient way for me to work. Other people are different. With this, I can see that there's actually more of a use for being able to edit a bit. I don't know why it is. I assume it's because I see this much more as a lot of people using it for note taking, for drafting letters, documents, possibly even emails, uh, because it's something you can carry around with you all the time. It's very light. It's very easy to just sling it in a bag or take it out of a bag and use it. Um, and I can see the benefit of being able to go back and edit. Shorter documents like that, particular scenes perhaps, then fine, that works. For me, generally, if I'm working on a large document, I just want to stay in the frame of mind where I'm creating, not analysing and working uh, as an editor or admin type person where I'm constantly monitoring typos I might have made. Staying in the creative mode is much more effective for me. That way I write about 5,000 words a day. I work to about 800 to 1,000 words every hour, not because of typing speed, but because I type very fast and then I pause while I think about what's this bloke gonna say? What sort of amount of description do I want in this scene? 
So I, it's a different way of working, but generally I get 5,000 words a day so I know exactly where I'm going and whether I'm on track or not. Uh, in case you're interested, I've just hit 35,000 words with a book I started really two weeks ago. Last week I, I did write 20 odd thousand words. This week I've already, it's this currently Tuesday, no it's not, it's Wednesday. Monday and Tuesday I was doing 5,000 words per day again. So I'm expecting that in about three weeks I should have finished this book and then I'll be into serious editing. But I can imagine this is going to be used a fair bit all the time while I'm working. Now it's just done a software update, which is quite impressive in its own right. So if I go up W, so new and W takes me up one line at a time. If I do new and D, it takes me forward a word at a time. If I do shift new D, it's a letter at a time. There you go. Okay, I've just found something else here which I need to quickly mention, and that is, having discussed my eyesight problems and so on, I've discovered that if you hold the power button down for three seconds, it comes up with a little display that says uh, one, if you want to go to Wi-Fi, so that's for attaching to a new Wi-Fi system, turning Wi-Fi on, turning Wi-Fi off. Two is font, and if you hit two, like that, it brings up, do you want a small font size, a medium font size, or a large font size? Now, with mine, it was set up to, I'm just gonna turn a light on here to see if that helps. It was turn to medium. Don't know if you can see that. You may not be able to see it. In which case, let's make life easier. Let's go to a font which is large number three and then hit return and suddenly it's a great deal easier to read so thanks astra house i hadn't spotted that yesterday when i started doing things but that's just another little feature that i think works really well especially for people like me with lousy eyesight back to the video right hope that was interesting thanks very much for watching uh, if you haven't done it already, do please subscribe and that way you're warm when a new video comes out. It also means that I've got a measure of how much people like this channel. Uh, my cha channel videos are not going to be entirely regular because making videos does detract from writing. And I've got three books I've got to write this year, which means I'm going some, as you can imagine. However, a simple subscribe and if you hit the like button, that helps as well. And just as a little motivator and bit of incentive, there'll be some videos coming up of little puppies soon. Hope you enjoyed that. Thanks very much for watching. Speak to you soon.